Holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Thus we sing in a popular Catholic hymn, composed by Father Frederick William Faber. In fact, we want to hold firm and truly to the faith of our fathers, from which we are born. The faith is a precious gift from God, entrusted to us by divine revelation, and handed down to us by our ancestors and all those who have preceded us. Faith is an important and fundamental component of our family history. This is true both for our spiritual as well for our natural family. For our spiritual family, which is the Church, it is important because Holy Mother Church has received that faith that brings us salvation from the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles, which are written down in the Bible and transmitted throughout the centuries down to us. Christ, who himself is the way, the truth and the life, has revealed what we need to know and to do in order to be saved and to be happy with him forever in heaven. These teachings, this faith, he has entrusted to the Church, which has handed it over unaltered to us through sacred tradition. The readings of this Sunday speak to us about this faith of our fathers. In the first reading, we have heard about the night that was, had been foretold to our ancestors, so that they would joyfully take courage and win their enemies with the help of the Lord. This should be an example for us. Many times in history, God, answering the prayers of the people, has intervened helping and supporting his faithful, delivering them from difficult situations and enemies by whom they were oppressed. We might think, for example, of the battles of Lepanto and Vienna, where the Christian troops, thanks to the intercession of Our Lady, won miraculously against the infidel invaders, or the situation of Austria right after the Second World War, where this country, through the prayer of the Holy Rosary, was freed from communist occupation. God is almighty, and Our Lady is the supplicant omnipotence, as she is called, what means that she can obtain from God for us every grace. Trusting in God and Our Lady, we can have hope and be sure to overcome all enemies, especially the enemies of our soul, which are sin, the bad angels, who are the demons, and human beings who want to induce us to sin. In the second reading, we have heard, only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that are pre at present remain unseen. Considering these words, we must ask ourselves, what is faith? We say that we have faith in a person when we are convinced that we can trust her. We call faithful a person who does not deceive anybody, to whom she has promised something or has a duty to do something. If we trust our husband or wife, our family or friends, how much more should we have trust in God and have faith in Him? We trust a human person because we have had the experience that this person has been always loyal to ourselves, has helped us when we were in need, and so on. If we study Holy Scripture, the history of the Church, or the lives of the saints, we will see how God is always faithful to his promises. If he has assured his assistance to a person who had pleaded him in prayer, he will, without any possibility of doubt, put it into practice. God is infinite truth. He knows everything and nothing can be hidden from him. He cannot be deceived, nor deceive anybody. When God has revealed us something, if he has promised us to do something, we can be absolutely sure that it will take place. 
And again, what is faith? The French philosopher Voltaire, who was not a Catholic and an enemy of the Church, said, I believe because it is absurd, accusing the Christians that their faith would consist in believing something, especially what the Catholic Church teaches, just for the fact that we cannot understand it, that it doesn't make sense, that it is absurd. But this accusation is false. This is not what the Catholic faith is like. A similar accusation we receive from many nowadays atheist scientists who affirm that we would simply believe in some childish fantasies concerning something that science is not yet be able is not yet able to explain. But we do not believe in God and in his promises just because we do not know how many atoms there are in a man or how many cells there are in a sheep. We believe because the history of humanity and in particular the history of the church demonstrate clearly how God has intervened many times in history, changing completely the unfolding of happenings. We can observe as well how many promises which God has given have become true. In addition, our faith is not, not absurd because it does not contradict reason in any way. Yes, there are mysteries of our faith which surpass reason, but there is not anything contradicting sound reason in it. The second reading has remembered us the case of Abraham and his descendants, of Sarah, who despite her age conceived a child. The reading says, That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, since he has founded the city for them. The Gospel of this Sunday contains the teaching of Jesus to us through several examples that, that we must be vigilant, that we need to be always watching out for our Lord who will come. There are three comings of our Lord to us. Firstly, we have the present coming of our Lord to the soul of every one of us. Jesus wants to come to each one of us, fill our hearts with his love, and give us, already in this life, a certain anticipation of heaven. Secondly, there is the coming of our Lord to our soul at the moment of death. As we know, when we die, we will be judged according to our deeds or omissions. Jesus explains us in the Gospel that we, as good servants, should not waste our time and our goods in drinking what means to drug and stun ourselves with the immoderate consume of the pleasures of this world, in order not to think and reflect about the consequences of such a behavior. We should not want to act like this. We want to observe the commandments of God and to do what he asks us to do. We want to be found prepared well when our Lord comes. Thirdly, there is the coming of the Lord at the end of the world when he comes to judge the living and the dead. On that day, every person on the world will receive the reward or the punishment that she deserves. Therefore, we also want to invite the people around us, especially those who are dear to us, to follow the law of Christ, which is a law dictated by charity and not an unsustainable burden in order to procure, procure also their eternal salvation. Attending the coming of the Lord and his heavenly and eternal goods, we want to link ourselves to those ones which are eternal and not to earthly goods, which we have to leave behind and long for our Lord, who will fill us with everlasting joy. St. Augustine says, If it is shameful for a married woman not to desire the return of her husband, how much more shameful is it for the Church not to desire Christ's return? Our Lady, the Virgin most vigilant and spouse of the Holy Spirit, who in her earthly life was always ardently longing for the coming of her divine spouse, may help us through her powerful intercession to keep our hearts full of faith and trust in God's promises and of an ardent desire to unite ourselves to God, who wants to give us everlasting joy with him.
May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,